All right, let's get started here with our final matchup for tonight. We are on merry-go-round, and at the six o'clock position, our blue zerg from Team Liquid, it is Snood. His opponent in the red trunks at the ten o'clock position, also playing for Team Liquid, it is Mana. And. Let's see. Going for the early scout, of course. Getting out uh, the pile on the low ground. And this will be the next Team Liquid team kill. Of course, having three players here in the My Starcraft Arena uh, does help out quite a bit in, in the team kill department. But, of course, um, Snoot is the first one to actually have a really decent chance to go home with 700 euros, but if Mana takes this, he will once again be um, the victor of the My Starcraft Arena, if you want to say so. I mean, um, all of these players can go home with a little bit of money, and we already saw Daishi going home with 200 euros, um, uh, with 100 euros, Snoot taking home 200 euros already. Um, wait, actually, the wait, I messed something up. No, it was Daishi going home with 100 euros. Um, Bonnie going home with 200 euros, and now Snoot going home with 300 at least, but he could um, he could stash a little bit and get 400 additional euros if he wins against Mana. And that would make him the reigning champion of the My Starcraft Arena, and would give him that top spot for next week. As we are returning next week, um, I think starting at 6 again. And there is the block here. And this is a little bit of a nuisance. For Snoot, but not too much trouble. He's just gonna go for the third uh, at the exposed location. This does give uh, Mana a little bit of an edge here. Um, of course, he could go for some solid early aggression, but out of the Forge Fast Expand, it's not that easy to, to put on some decent pressure. But I think both of these players are just fine and happy to go into the macro game. And Snoot, for now, just uh, going for the additional hatch and uh, getting his queens out, uh, getting a couple links out to um, scout out the map, see what that probe is doing, but oh, 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 sneaky mana, hiding this probe behind the mineral line here. And looks, let's see, single zirkling making his way back here, so I think it's gonna be enough. Is he gonna scout it out? Yes, he will. And that's the third. Third hatch for Snoot coming out. Of course, um, the Queen will have to make its way over um, to the third base. Quite a tedious journey for it. Without the creep. Um, but it's gonna make its way over there. Um, so far, of course, no aggression possible by mana. He just got his gateway up. Um, he did get the photo cannon behind it, of course, to be safe uh, against any um, mass link production that could be happening out of Snoot. But then again, I don't think uh, with the with the way he played against uh, <clears throat> against uh, what I screwed up <laughs> um, against uh, Bunny uh, that he would do do a similar style uh, against Mana because you we would assume that Mana is watching, but then again you never know. These guys probably train uh, train a lot, uh, even train just quickly before the matches, so Mana might have been um, just training and getting ready. I like the way he plays this out, he did hide one probe outside of the space, which is a nice idea just to um, get proxy pylons set up, uh, high tech later on, or just even get a scouting probe out, because um, later on if the Zerg does have a link available at the front, or just a pair of links at the front, then it's kind of hard as the Protoss to go out and um, even get a probe, uh, get a probe out to scout out the opponent. All right, so that's the stalker looking for his link prey, but not gonna happen here. And plus one is started already. No third or fourth gas being taken as of yet by mana. And that's the first two gases coming in for Snoot. Um, he just went for. Oh, not even going for the speed upgrade yet. Okay, that's interesting. Um. Though so he is getting a little bit of gas now, and yeah, sent his workers into the gas in the main as well. So maybe he started that a little bit earlier, and there's the overlord scouting out. Not seeing all that much, but he did see the double gas. 
But that's not too surprising. Did he scout out these double gateways though? Uh, let's check out Snow's vision. He saw two gateways, but he didn't see the remaining four. Wow, that's seven gates already. This is a really solid push potential out of liquid mana. And Snood not scouting any of it yet. And this second Overlord, I doubt that it's gonna make its way um, and scout out these these additional gateways. This is not gonna go scouted by liquid mana. Let's see what he's doing to prepare for this. He has a single spine available, but that, that's not gonna help all that much. In the natural, getting a little bit more gas, getting more and more gases. Uh, Roach Warren is coming up. A little bit late, if if you ask me, at the 8 minute mark. Um, not really safe, and he even misses the proxy pylon. Wow, mana is in a really, really solid position to put out some crazy pressure. And did scout out the, uh, the probe here. Might actually get to kill it. Yeah, one more shot, that's the probe going down. And this proxy pylon, and these stalkers really tell the story, the whole story to Matt Snoot, and he's going straight into roach production, getting 13 roaches out already, but his creep spread is lacking quite a bit. He doesn't have a uh, creep connection here uh, from the natural to the third, so this is gonna be quite an issue he has to deal with. Speed is almost done, clear reconstitution not even halfway done, and no creep spread to the third. Just a single spine to defend the third, and nothing in the natural, and Mind you, this is layer tech here in the natural. And a lot of a lot of sentries available. That's six seven sentries. And I think, yep. We're gonna see the lockout here. So the main hatch uh, will go down. A lot of workers will be killed here. And he has so many sentries available. Um, this is gonna be uh, yeah, this is gonna be the force wall the entire time. Oh, a lot of links did spawn in the main. He did get rid of a couple of um, a couple of stalkers, oh, just one, not too much. So this is quite the issue that uh, Snoot has to deal with now. Uh, 12 roaches are in production and ooh, the sentries making their way down into the natural. And there's around just drones for now, there's force fits coming in. Oh, there's recall, wow, interesting, mana, decided to recall there. He could have possibly killed off Snoot here but was content to just uh, get rid of the main and of course there's the run by Snoot going straight for the base race one more time but a nice force field getting rid of these roaches on the on the low ground and folks on the high ground not doing all that much so that was a good job out of Snoot to just um, force the recall but he did lose quite a bit here but just now already preparing uh, getting a couple of Hydras up, which is a nice idea. Oh, even going straight for the Robo, but I don't think he has enough DPS here to get rid of it right, right away. And some amazing force fields out of mana. But didn't really help all that much. Roaches just sneak by on the right side. And the force fields did trap uh, did trap the Roaches against the Zealots, but it wasn't enough Zealots to uh, get rid of all of them. Of course, Photon Overcharge doing its work there. And this should be it for now for mana. Uh, Snoot will only go in there once he has a lot more Hydras, which is not gonna happen all too soon. Of course his uh, economy also lying in shambles a little bit there. 38 workers uh, for three bases and oh, well, the third not being reestablished as of yet. So he's forced in a defensive position right now. He still has that one spine available and he's starting to get the creep spread established. But with the proxy pylon for liquid mana in position and already the first immortal out, this is not too bad for mana. If he can keep that immortal alive, and this is this is very key to his strategy here, keeping that immortal alive. He doesn't have a lot of force fields, just a single set or a three sentries, but um, maybe two force fields, yep, and those force fields have already been triggered. Hydros are coming in, getting rid of the first sentry, a couple more Hydros in production, but this is not something that you need right now, you need some links to just close off this army. Get rid of the sentries, oh they're, they're getting rid of a third, It's not a lot of production coming out of Snoot, he's just simply missing all of his larvae, this is why he went for the for the Hydro production, just to get a couple more, a uh, couple more units out that are actually worth his while, but 
Oh, they're just trickling it. I think this is gonna be Liquid Mana taking this, and there it is. Mana going for the 1-0 here. Wow. Really, really solid opener. Um, with a 7-gate aggression. Um, catching Snoot by surprise. I mean, he got a little bit unlucky, not scouting the proxy pylon, uh, getting his overlord picked off. Um, not getting the second overlord even close to the right position to to actually see what is happening. And yeah, I mean, if you would have gotten the roaches a little bit earlier and had the creep spread, the creep connection between the natural and the third, that would have helped out immensely. Just the creep connection would have possibly saved his day here. But let's see. Um, it's just one game. We are in a best of five after all. So still a lot of possibilities to make this happen and make a comeback happen all right everyone ready mana is ready stoot not quite there yet and there we are both of them are ready we're loading into the map king seon station um a little bit of a, a bigger map and a little bit of a weird layout. So there are possibilities um, for the Zerg to make some crazy plays, but not something we usually see out of Snoop, but he did surprise us in his games against Bunny. So I would just expect anything out of him. But he is on the back foot this time. No 2-0 advantage early on, nothing like that. So he's probably gonna go into standard play. But let's see. There's the GLHF, and here he is, our victor of the first map. He's playing for Team Liquid. Is the blue Protoss here in the right bottom position? It is Mana. And his opponent, as the red, spot, red Zerg spawned in the top left, it is Snood. Yeah, Snoot definitely needs to work on his creep spread. Um, maybe the whole situation um, with the third kind of threw him off guard and threw him out of his game. Because Mana did a solid job just blocking the natural, so Snoot had to go for a third at the exposed location. A similar thing could happen here. Um, one thing to kind of deny that, um, deny that harassment from Mana early on is just to have two workers available. Or um, go for an early pool, but I think early pool is too much of an economical investment early on. Um, so I think we're just gonna see a standard play for now out of Snoot. There's the Forge again, so Forge fast expand for Liquid Mana once again. And that probe is uh, looking to do the harassment one more time, but this time um, Snoot, of course, already in position, he will get his hatch down before Mana even gets into play here. But of course, this probe uh, always worth its while. He can check the timings on gas being taken, any other shenanigans that Snoot might be thrown out on the map. And wow, are you seriously considering? Uh, oh, you, this is this is just a fake. I th I think Mana is gonna fake uh, some cannon pressure here. Uh, with the Overlord in position, hatchery, everything scouting this out. I don't think that he's gonna do anything with it. But let's see. Two cannons being placed down already. Only four drones being pulled so far. There's a second pylon going up. I think Snoot underestimated this uh, this aggression quite a bit here. And ooh, nice positioning. Only three drones are working on this first cannon. Second cannon only being hit by a single drone so far. I think, uh, wow. This one, at least one of these cannons is gonna make it. And there's this third one coming up. Oh, Probe is trapped a little bit. Nope, he does get out though. And the cannon. One cannon being cancelled, second one should be... Yeah, you get rid of the second cannon and these additional cannons shouldn't do all that much. So in the end, uh, I don't think it was... Well, mana? Wow, uh, do you really want to go for so much aggression here? I mean, Snoot lost a little bit of mining time, but that's a lot of resources down the drain for mana. There's the cancel, but still, two pylons just put up for nothing. 600 resources lost. That is quite a bit of an advantage for Liquid Snoot. And uh, 
He's gonna try to capitalize on it, make something happen here. Six links on their way to Mana's base. And this photon cannon might not actually be done. And of course, it's also in a position where you can just make a run by happen. And six links in your base? Oh, every Protoss player hates that. If you play Protoss, you know what I'm talking about. And there's the GG. Instant GG. Liquid Snoot making a comeback happen. One to one is the score. And uh, well, that was a nice little way, a uh, nice quick comeback. Just solid, solid, uh, uh, solid, solid counter aggression coming out, uh, getting rid of the cannons. And I mean, that for me, it was incredibly close how he dealt with that. Um, just, I don't know. Um, Photon cannons, just a single photon cannon coming up, but again, he did scout it out quite early, but only sending three workers down there, and the positioning was pretty good for mana, only having a couple workers that actually got to the photon cannons. But this is what separates these top tier pros from regular scrubs like us. They know how many workers, the exact amount of workers they need to send to these uh, to these photon cannons, um, depending on their positioning, depending on the timing, and they know how to pull this off. Alright, let's get started uh, with the game here. We are on Deadwing, and in the top left corner we have our Blue Zerg that just made a comeback. He is playing for Team Liquid, and it is Snoot. His opponent uh, spawned in the bottom left corner. It is Liquid's Mana, and he's just scouting out what Snoot is doing. Um, didn't see the pool just yet, but he might dash back in there, just to check out uh, if Snoot is getting that pool ready. But for now, um, doing f doing the uh, little bit of harassment there and uh, stopping the, the pr uh, drone from building the next hatch. And ooh, Snoot. Snoot is a wise one. Pulling his, uh, pulling his overload back just to check, okay, is there gonna be, um, is there gonna be cannon pressure one more time? And we'll see the dance, we'll see the dance around the hatch. Um, but he does get the possibility. Makes it happen, puts down the hatch, no issues this time, no, uh, not being forced to the third, um, and also exposed hatch. Uh, even though I think on Deadwing, it's not as bad as uh, of a position. And that's the first queen coming up. So far, just drone production. Um, no links coming out as of yet, but I think we'll see at least a pair of links for now. Uh, just to shout, sc scout out what mana is doing and um, get rid of that probe. That's uh, still, that could still be coming back. And mana, of course, closing everything off. Uh, he doesn't have it fully closed off yet, but um, he will if uh, if links will stream in, or if he sees links making their way across the map. But I think I don't think that's gonna happen here. Snoot put down his third, so a pretty early third timing, and uh, not the earliest that you could go for, but still four minutes, ten seconds, pretty early third. But then again, Deadwing, um, they are on the close ground distance, so. It's um, it's not that long of a ride, but it's still one of the bigger maps. And he should get out those circlings, just to see, okay, what is Mana up to? Uh, is he moving out with a couple of units? Uh, of course, so far, uh, Mana is not going for anything here. He has his forge set up, but just now going for the cyber core, uh, getting more probes out. Uh, he did put out two gases in the main. But that's uh, nothing really to worry about. And he still has that option, like in the first game, to go for some all-out gateway aggression. So this is something we might be seeing out of him, uh, since it did work so well on the first map. One thing to note though, um, Mana does have one Overlord already in position. There's Stargate. And I don't think the second Overlord is gonna get there all too soon to like, get really, really early scouting in. And first Overlord, of course, getting out of there. He does know, okay, Stalker could be coming out any any second now. Let's see what that Stargate is gonna do for mana here. I would expect uh, some Oracle play. Maybe do a little bit of harassment. And so far, we've not seen Snoot go up crazy in the in the Queen numbers. And he's been doing 
no, he he didn't do the best job in creep spreading. Um, of course, in in uh, ZVP, it's not quite as important, but I still I, I would still consider it a big advantage if you do spend a little bit of energy just to sc uh, spread your creep. And we've seen some Zerg players that just prefer the style where you have a lot of queens um, available just to deal with any kind of harassment that could be coming out of the Protoss. And there we go, it's a Phoenix. Early Phoenix, interesting. Uh, interesting option. Of course, this does change the late game quite a bit as well, because if you do open Stargate and get initial Phoenixes out, you kind of um, you kind of stop the potential for the Zerg to go for Mutas. Because if, if he knows, okay, there are um, there are 10 Phoenixes out on the map already, then it's quite an investment to go into Mutas. But I do like this, um, yeah, this early early Phoenix play. You will get rid of all these all of these overlords um, around the bases, or you're getting rid of the second overlord as well. Behind this, Mana is going for the plus one attacks. He's going for the Robo, getting a couple of gateways out, but it does look like he's gearing up to take a third eventually here. And out of Snoot, we see a lot of roaches. Speed is incoming as well. Um, he hasn't droned in a while, but he's still in a good spot. 54 workers, and he's going for layer tech. I think he's going to see and make something happen, because he knows, okay, mana, he did go for that early Stargate. Um, he's going to be a little bit behind on the gateway count. So I can just go for some uh, ground force pressure, and this is exactly what he's doing here. But a couple of a couple of phoenixes will, will make do, and so far none of the zerglings have gotten here. And that's a solid force field out of mana, keeping all of these Zerglings and Roaches back. Oh, the plus one. It's under pressure. Is he going to focus it out? No, he's focusing on the pylons for now. But there it is. And will he get the plus one? This is huge. Wow. Snoot breaking through the encampment and taking out the sentries. Oh, this is not going to be enough mana. This is a lot of Roaches in your main. And I think he's going to get rid of those pylons as well. Yep, that's links. That's a lot of links in the main. And this is just some massive damage that Snoot is putting out here. Uh, he's gonna get rid of so many workers, but there's the warp in of a couple of zealots. See if uh, mana can deal with this quickly. That's a lot of pylons already going down. I think he can clear this up eventually, but the damage has been done. 41 workers on mana's side. Snoot far ahead with 70 workers. The thing is, though, um, Mana has a pretty good uh, tech tech advantage. He has a single um, he has a single void ray out. He's producing more void rays uh, as soon as he gets that pylon back up. That is, and he also went into Colossus production. So there's a single Colossus in, on the way as well, and he's rebuilding his forge. But then again, the thing is, with the forge gone, um, that's possibly Snoot. Um, uh, that's a possibility for Snoot to just uh, stay in this game. Uh, right now, it's it's kind of hard to tell. Snoot is, is definitely ahead in the economic game, but if mana would go out with uh, with some solid aggression right now, I think it would be a little bit hard to for Snoot to stop this. But behind this, he is going for a lot of Hydras, uh, getting the plus one missile attacks, getting the Grooved Spines upgrade, and of course, Gleal Reconstitution. So it's gonna be Roach Hydra for now. But I just caught a little bit of a glimpse there on the infestation pit. So possibly Swarmhouse coming out. He did go for a fourth right there. Uh, he has really amazing worker saturation right now. 76 workers. And not so far and well, not so far ahead in the army supply though. 34 just now producing a lot of roaches, uh, gaining a little bit of supply, and there's the enduring locust upgrade. So he is going for these, uh, for these oh-so-pesky swarm hosts. Oh, the queens are being taken out here. Nice job getting rid of the queens, kind of helping out uh, with the uh, Phoenix and Colossus harass. And wow, good force fields, catching a lot of a lot of hydras there on the right side. And he needs to put out a couple more force fields, but I don't think he's got out the fourth yet. So. Still that possibility to take out the fourth if he can make something happen here. Ooh, some roaches did break through on the left side. Mothership core is being taken out and ooh, mana has to has to make a retreat happen, but the Colossus goes down. Second one can be saved, but that's a lot of resources down the drain for mana. And almost double the supply for Snoot. More and more roaches are being produced. Enduring Locust upgrade is almost done as well. Um, I don't think we'll see too many swarm hosts come into action here, since there are vipers 
uh, being produced right now for uh, Liquid Snoot. And Vipers are gonna just help out immensely here. They can pull out the Colossi, um, possibly uh, pull out Immortals if they're gonna be coming to production for Liquid Mana anytime soon. And that that's just a massive advantage. And Snoot has a huge Roach army right now. He's not even trying to um, make a transition happen. He's just gonna go for Roach Hydra all the way, uh, get a couple of Vipers to complement this. And I mean, th this is gonna work out superbly for Snoot. Uh, not really trying to engage just yet. He's probably waiting for the Vipers to get a little bit of uh, energy. And then once he has that, he's gonna pull out uh, pull out the Void Ray, pull out the Colossus, and wow, what amazing force speed, but it doesn't help. Two to one for Liquid Snoot. Nice move. Really, really nice move. Alright, let me try to get back into the next lobby. We don't want to stick to re-streaming re this. Okay, okay, fellas. We'll try. It's Nimbus, it's loading, it's streaming data. What up? We're in the lobby. Sweet. Okay, awesome. So, not gonna be a restream for this possibly final game, but Mana still has a chance to make a comeback happen. If Snoot does win this one, he goes home with 700 euros, and that's for... Well, how long did he play? Maybe two hours? That's insane, right? But he did make um, quick progress, uh, or, well, he did finish off Bonnie quite quickly. That is what I meant to say. Uh, Snoot is gonna take a short, um, short bathroom break. So we'll be right back in about two minutes. I'm gonna put on some amazing Brood War music for you guys. We'll be right back with the My Starcraft Arena, powered by Daily Motion, and the third game, wait, fourth game for tonight in this epic final conclusion. Snoot versus Mana on Nimbus. All right, guys, we're back with the My Starcraft Arena, powered by Daily Motion. I'm G Shock. And we're going into the fourth and possibly final map in this epic conclusion of the My Starcraft Arena. And here he is, spawned in the top right corner of Nimbus. He is the blue Protoss playing for Team Liquid. It is Mana. And his opponent, Red Zerg, also playing for Team Liquid. He is Liquid Snood. And he's up one game could possibly close this out and go home with 700 euros. Quite, an, quite a big prize pool for uh, such a stacked tournament. Short tournament too, and, and an amazing um, yeah, amazing way to set this up, because if you think about it, I mean, having, um, having this arena? Interesting, really interesting setup. Um, one player enters the arena, um, the first, the victor of the first game gets 100 euros, Victor of the second game gets 200 euros and so forth, uh, up to the last game who gets uh, 400 euros. So if you enter early, you have the possibility to go home with a thousand bucks. Um, if you enter late, you, well, you only have to win a few matches to get a lot of money, but you don't get quite, quite as much. But then again, 400 bucks for just winning a single, uh, single best of five for liquid mana. You can still make this happen, guys. Let's see what Snoot is gonna go for here. He did open pool first, going into the hatch. Just playing it really, really safely. And for now, just producing his queen and mana. Changing things up a little bit here. Not going for a Forge Fast Expand, instead uh, Gateway Expand. And Cybercore already coming out, so he's gonna put on a little bit of aggression. But the problem is, he, um, yeah. He took the longest time to scout at his opponent, so that does give a little bit of an edge to Snoot. Because he does have time to just prepare for this. Let's see where his links are gonna scout out mana. Is he gonna go for the right way? Does look like it. And there's the expand coming out of mana. And just a single zealot for now. Not going for anything else. He did put a chrono boost on the cyber corridor. And already, um, of course, next pylon being placed. Overlord will get in there, get a glimpse of the action, but he needs to watch out. He doesn't want to lose his Overlord just yet. 
wants to check out is there an expand coming in and on Nimbus there should be because you do have that little bit of safe expansion back here or Snoot also going for his hatch and about the same timing as last map say around the four minute mark here and that pro mana will you get in there yes he did and he did scout out okay there's a hatch here nothing too crazy going on but on mana's side yeah i think we're gonna see some four gate aggression here sentry is on the way just to clear things off and uh Possibly close it off with the force field and the cyber core making its way across the map. He does have a probe in position as well, just to put down a single uh, single pylon, get the proxy pylon ready. Uh, next, next uh, chrono boost coming. Nope, he's not going to waste it on that. Probably going to use it for his gateways. And I don't think that Snoot saw all of this. Oh yes, he did. He did see all of these gateways, so he knows what's coming, and he's preparing, getting this, uh, getting a single spine, getting a lot of, um, getting a lot of links, and getting two queens ready. Problem is, right now he did roam just up until this point. He doesn't have speed ready. He's going for the roach warren behind this, so he wants to stop mana um, dead in his tracks. He wants to stop him before he even gets there, so he has a little bit of time to get the roach warren up, to get some more spines up, uh, get a couple more queens out. And, wow, even droning. Wow, okay, Snoot must be quite sure of himself if he's going that route. Interesting. And, ooh, Sentry is exposed. And there's the force field. A little bit too late if you ask me. Shouldn't have gone for uh, the hull damage. There's the next Sentry coming out, and here's the aggression coming in. Three Sentries, a lot of, a lot of Zealots. And so far, no links ready, but that's a lot of queens. So transfuses could come in handy here to keep that spine crawl alive. Second spine crawl coming up as well. And he already started this creep spread. So Snoot changing things up quite a bit and it's helping him out greatly here. He gets this creep spread maybe a little bit further up the edge. Problem is the mothership core is sitting right on top of it. So that's not gonna happen. The queens trying to advance. They want to stick close to the spine crawler, keep that alive. Better force an engagement there. Some solid force fields, but not quite catching all of the all the queens. There comes the slow field. The links are closing in from the right side, but the zealots are there in position. Uh, queens is being hit. Queen, oh, queen going down. That was the only one with enough energy, and this one is singled out as well. One on the right falling as well, and 26 links are in production. But he lost so many queens in this engagement. That's a lot of larvae that have, that have gone missing here. And solid focus firing coming out on the spine, taking that out as well. The links are streaming in, but is it gonna be enough? More and more zealots are being warped in. Can close into the sentries, but the zealots just make quick process of these links. Gets one link. He got like two or three zealots in that engagement and just now the roach production has started. There's the inject, and the second spine is being moved down. Let's check out what mana is doing behind this. Uh, so far, not all that much. He's just sticking to this foregate. He wants to pull it through. And the more and more time passes, I, I think Snoot is going to be in a, in a pretty good position to stop this. Uh, I don't know. I don't really like what mana is doing here. Is he going to retreat now or go back into production? It doesn't look like it. Looks like he really wants to pull this off and make it happen. Oh, good job. Snoot getting rid of the debris. Making making it much harder for mana to close this off and possibly uh, stop any, any reinforcements from engaging as well. And that's the third spine already coming out. Mana's trying from the left side. And force fields on the left side to just get rid of these queens and results are closing in doing some solid damage first queen taken out second queen also falling third one will go down here and the roaches are not quite there yet a lot of damage being done but the roaches are actually in a pretty good position behind these mineral uh, mineral fields and taking out a lot of these uh, a lot of these zealots a few stalkers come to play as well St still two queens available and I think most of the damage dealers have been dealt with. 20 more links are in production. Roaches are coming out as well. He needs to heal these roaches back up though. He needs to stay back. Links are closing into the sentries. Not quite getting there, but he wants to get rid of the stalkers first. Those are the big damage dealers here. And I think that's 
probably enough for Snoon. Yeah. But some solid force fields do keep Manus army alive for now. A couple more roaches are closing in. Six more roaches are in production. The plus one is almost halfway finished. If Snoot can just stall for a little bit longer, I think he can win this. I think he can take it. But he needs a couple more roaches, a couple more links to just close off from behind. Uh, maybe maybe uh, get behind mana, um, kind of get a couple of links behind the stalkers. Just close off any retreat routes. And I mean, mana doesn't really have that much of an income. And just now going back into the resource game. This is not going to work. You can't make that macro transition happen now. Should have done a lot more damage if you want to make that happen. Good force fields catching two more roaches. But he's caught out there. He hasn't reproduced his mothership core. So if Snoot actually catches him and realizes that he can catch the entire army here, this is going to be game. And there we go. It's a lot of sentries though. A lot of possible force fields. And I think Snoot is just going to play it safe. He's in a good spot, he just needs to realize it. He will need to uh, get an Overseer over there and just check out, okay, how far ahead am I? Did mana uh, draw, uh, probe up behind this? And uh, he's gonna be happy to to realize it's not... Um, yeah, it's, it's not that much. It's not that much. Mana just went for that 4-gate and had no real transition prepared. But he's catching up, uh, spending a lot of his chrono boosts on the Nexi, um, getting ready for the third uh, third Nexus here, but good job, Snoot putting a, li a single link there. Does help out to ch check that timing, and mana actually not really doing so good on the uh, energy on his, uh, on his Nexi, so he's not really using his chrono boost all that much. I think this one has full energy, maybe he's kind of given up already? Also being supply blocked right now. No, nope, he does clear that up though. And we have we have hydros in production. Six are on the way. Plus one is done. Plus two is on the way as our way. Uh, and force fields. Some really good force fields catching the right side of the army in its entirety. Hydros not really getting into the fray. And the roaches are being taken out here at the front. But now they can close in. Not a lot of force fields available for mana. And his army is shrinking. The Hydras can close in. And that's enough damage for Snoot. There's the GG. And Snoot takes home three, uh, 700 euros here in the My Starcraft Arena. Powered by Daimly Motion. Throws Liquid Mana off his throne in a pretty epic conclusion for tonight. Wow. Not bad. GG. Well played by Liquid Snoot. And he showed some interesting play tonight. This is not something that you usually see out of Snoot. This was something new. Something exciting where he um, also pulled off early game aggression. Um, we didn't really see that late game Snoot come into play, but he showed us some really, really um, solid defense right now. And yeah, um, just showed that he is definitely one of the top foreigners right now.